Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Linux. This video is in two parts. The first part shows you how to create the Ubuntu bootable USB drive, which was shown in a previous video. And then um, the second part shows you the steps to actually install Ubuntu Linux. If you have already followed the guide for creating the Ubuntu USB drive, then you can skip to the five minute marker um, and then you'll be at the point where you actually run the installer. If you haven't created a Ubuntu USB drive, let's get started. First off, open a Chrome browser or uh, web browser of your choice, and then type Ubuntu download into the search bar. Click on the Ubuntu.com download desktop, accept all and visit site, and then you are given two options, you can download 2204, which is the long-term support release, or you can choose the latest version, which is 2210. It's worth pointing out that the 2210 version is only supported until July 2023. So if you plan on using it um, beyond that, um, then you'll have to upgrade. Uh, whereas if you use the 2204, you've got five years and then you won't have to, all you have to do is updates. You don't have to upgrade um, to get um, security releases. Ubuntu 2204 has four, uh, requires four gigabytes of memory and a dual core processor. For this video, I'm going to be using the 2210 version of Ubuntu. So the next step is uh, open the browser again, and at this time you're going to search for uh, etcher.io in the address bar. You can leave Ubuntu downloading in the background whilst you're doing this part. Um, uh, when the Etcher website loads, click on the download link, link for your operating system. When Etcher and Ubuntu have finished downloading, you're going to want to click on the um, etcher.exe file to start the installer. If you've uh, already closed your browser, you can um, open Windows Explorer and go to your downloads folder and uh, the Etcher installer should be in there. So you can double click it from there if you haven't um, got it available to click from the browser. When the Etcher installer starts, uh, you'll see a license agreement. You need to click I agree and then Etcher will be installed to your operating system. At this point, you need to insert a USB drive. Uh, note that all data on this drive will be deleted. So uh, if there's anything important on there, make sure you copy it off first. An icon for Bellina Etcher should now appear on your desktop. Double click it to open the software. Click on the Flash from File button and from your Downloads folder, uh, click on the US, uh, Ubuntu um, ISO that you downloaded earlier. Then click Select Target, choose your USB drive, make sure it's the correct one. Click Select and then click Flash. There are two phases to the installation at this point. The first part flashes the image to the USB drive and then a validation check happens. Uh, this can take a, a little while to perform, so you can go make yourself a drink and come back um, in a short while. At some point, Etcher will complete its process and you'll see the screen that says flash complete. At this point, you can close Etcher and you can reboot your computer. When your computer reboots, you're gonna to need to press the function key that brings up the boot menu. This differs from manufacturer to manufacturer. Common function keys to bring up the boot menu are F7, F9, F12, and Escape key. You can either try these out or you can look on Google to find out the relevant function key for your manufacturer. Sometimes it displays it on the screen as you're booting up. When the boot menu appears, select the USB drive that you wrote Ubuntu to. Another menu will appear. The option you want to choose off this menu is try or install Ubuntu. The Ubuntu logo will now appear and it will take some time before it gets to the next stage, which is a screen shown here, which asks you whether you want to try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. You can either click install Ubuntu at this screen or you can click try Ubuntu and when you get to the desktop, you can click the install Ubuntu icon in the bottom right corner. You'll notice on my video that the screens change between Ubuntu 2204 and Ubuntu 2210, and that's just to show that the steps are the same regardless as to which version you are installing. The first thing we're gonna do is connect to the Wi-Fi. So click in the notification area in the top right corner, click on Wi-Fi, and then choose your Wi-Fi network. Then enter the password as required. 
At the welcome screen, choose your installation language and then click continue. Now choose your keyboard layout by choosing the language on the left hand side and then choosing the appropriate option in the right column and then click continue. You can now choose whether to go for a normal installation, which includes all the applications such as web browsers, office suite, etc. Or you can go for a minimal installation, which just comes with a web browser and basic utilities. You can also choose to download updates whilst the installation is occurring. Um, this will save you time later on. And you can also install third party software, um, and this gives you hardware drivers, uh, etc. You may see a message as shown on the screen. Uh, what this is saying is that you have a drive mounted um, and if you want to install to that drive, then you need to unmount it in order to be able to repartition it. So if that is the case, click yes. Um, if it's a drive that you don't intend to write Ubuntu to, then you can click no, um, or you might want to click yes and then remove the drive anyway. If you already have an operating system installed, such as Windows, then you will be given the option to install Ubuntu alongside uh, Windows. Um, if you want to just install Ubuntu um, and replace the operating systems there, you can click on Erase Disk and install Ubuntu, or you can choose something else. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going for the Erase Disk and install Ubuntu, and this will just leave Ubuntu and no other operating system on the computer. A message will appear showing you the partitions that will be created and the drives that will be overwritten. This is your last chance to cancel. If you click continue now anything on the drive will be wiped and so if you've got windows or any important files on that drive you should click go back and go and back them up um, if you're ready to continue uh, then click continue you will now be asked to choose uh, a location as to where you are uh, this sets your time zone on your computer and therefore your clock uh, so click on the area of the map where you live or you can click on the box and choose your location that way and when you're ready click continue uh, you're now ready to create a user, so uh, enter your name, give your computer a name, and this is how your computer will appear on the network. Then create a username and enter a password and repeat that password. You can choose to log in automatically, but I don't recommend doing this because it means anyone who uses your computer will be able to um, log in simply by st starting it. Uh, you can require your password to log in, which is what I recommend, and you can use Active Direct Directory. Uh, when you've filled in the form, uh, click continue and the installation process will continue. You can now uh, rest for a while, um, go get a drink because uh, Ubuntu is going to install in the background, it's going to create partitions, copy files, install the files and install any updates if you have the internet connected. Uh, when the installation is complete, uh, you'll be given the option to continue testing uh, and continue using the live version of Ubuntu or you can click restart now. When you click restart, um, you will see a screen as shown above. Uh, you should uh, remove the USB drive at this point and then uh, click the return key. When your computer reboots, you'll be at the Ubuntu login screen. Uh, choose your user and then enter the password. And that's the end of the installation process and indeed the end of the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and click subscribe for more videos from Everyday Linux User.